This is chapter 11 on customer relationship management and supply chain management. Basically the first half of this chapter is on customer relationship management or CRM and the second half is on supply chain management or SCM. The chapter opening case is about a company that delivers food online. Organic and Beyond Corporation is engaged in the cultivation, production, distribution, and home delivery service of organic food. For the company, B2C operations were more complex than B2B operations because of the number of orders. This affected their choice in how they delivered service and food to customers. Section 11.1 is about defining customer relationship management. Customer relationship management is an approach to managing a company's interaction with current and potential customers. It uses data analysis about customers' history with a company to improve business relationships with customers specifically focusing on customer retention and ultimately driving sales growth. CRM, as the name implies, focuses on customers and managing relationships with them. Customers are the focus of the quality revolution that we have talked about in our theory section. CRM is most essential for small, medium, and large businesses. CRM is a customer-focused and customer-driven organizational strategy. Customer relationships have become less personal with the rapid growth of the Internet and the World Wide Web. Customer churn is the percentage of customers that will be lost over time, so we want to reduce customer churn. Customer touch points are a brand's points of customer contact from start to finish. For example, customers may find a business online in an ad, see ratings and reviews, visit its website, shop at its retail store, or contact its customer service. Here's a quote from Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. The best customer service is if the customer doesn't need to call you, doesn't need to talk to you, it just works. Data consolidation refers to the collection and integration of data from multiple sources into a single destination. During this process, different data sources are put together or consolidated into a single data store. Data consolidation offers a 360 degree view of customers. In other words, it is a complete view of each customer. Collaborative CRM is an approach to customer relationship management in which the various departments of a company, such as sales, technical support, and marketing, share any information they collect from interactions with customers. For example, customer feedback gathered from a technical support session could inform marketing staff about products and services that might be of interest to the customer. The purpose of collaboration is to improve the quality of customer service and, as a result, increase customer satisfaction and loyalty. Collaborative CRM systems provide effective and efficient interactive communication with the customer throughout the entire organization. Refer to the case, it's about business, Amazon, truly superb customer service. Amazon CRM systems described in the case are operational customer touching. All customers shopping from Amazon are required to create an account which makes it easier to make future purchases. These accounts also provide Amazon an opportunity for target marketing, i.e. customers can be emailed with offers and promotion based upon their past purchases. Amazon's basic CRM strategy has always focused on anticipation. Your chapter has another case. It's about business rating online customer service. Online feedback typically captures roughly 5% of customer interactions. Stella Service Inc. is a privately held American information and measurement company with headquarters in New York City, New York. The company measures and rates the customer service performance of online companies in a process audited by global accounting and auditing firm KPMG. Stella Service entered into a partnership with Google to give companies a double mark of approval in the eyes of customers. Stella Service's business is B2B. Customer facing refers to the manner in which a business service feature is experienced or seen by a customer. A key customer relationship management component, a customer facing solution, is designed to deliver satisfying user experiences via all customer touch points. Many customer facing processes and technologies are significant business investment components with a strong influence on revenue generation. Customer-facing CRM applications are those services that interact directly with customers. Customer service is about providing value for customers by helping them make the most of products and services. Customer support is mostly about providing technical assistance to customers by helping them resolve any issues they have with products and services. Salesforce automation is a customer-facing CRM application. A contact management system tracks all contacts that have been made with a customer 
the purpose of each contact, and any follow-up that might be necessary. Marketing refers to activities a company undertakes to promote the buying or selling of products or services. Marketing includes advertising, selling, and delivering products to customers or other businesses. One popular marketing technique is called upselling. This is a strategy in which the business person provides to customers the opportunity to purchase related products or services of greater value in place of or along with the customer's initial product or service selection. For example, you decide it's finally time to get a new TV. You go to Best Buy to check out your options. One of the Best Buy sales representatives points out that the largest TV they have is also the most amazing picture quality. Even though you didn't want a TV that big, you decide it's worth it for the better picture quality. The sales representative's technique is called upselling. Campaign management is the planning, execution, tracking, and analysis of a marketing initiative, sometimes centered around a new product launch or an event. Customer touching applications are those kinds of CRM applications that a customer can directly interact with and change without the involvement of another person. By contrast, customer facing applications may involve people. Here are some examples of customer touching applications. So you go online and you have the ability to search and compare products within a single company portal. You can also find technical or other information and services about a specific product such as a laptop battery. You can walk through to get products customized as when you buy a Dell computer. You may be familiar with facts or frequently asked questions. You may email the company and get an automated response. A loyalty program is a marketing strategy designed to encourage customers to continue to shop at or use the services of a business associated with the program. The purpose of a loyalty program is to influence future behavior. Section 11.3 is about analytical customer relationship management systems. Analytical CRM is a systematic approach to analyze customer data and interaction to improve business processes. Analytical CRM systems provide business intelligence. OLAP is a type of analytical CRM system. OLAP, or Online Analytical Processing, is the technology behind many business intelligence applications. OLAP is a powerful technology for data discovery, including capabilities for limitless report viewing, complex analytical calculations, and predictive what-if scenario planning, such as we use in budgeting and forecasting. OLAP is an important technology in analytical CRM systems. Section 11.4 is about other types of customer relationship management systems. Your book lists four. First is On Demand. On Demand means that a provider makes software available for customers who can then have the software modified according to their current demand or requirements. This involves flexible licensing business models based on the number of users or the data volume. CRM On Demand is a solution that is made available by a software manufacturer via the internet. The CRM system is hosted in a high security data center and can also be used via the internet or to be more precise with a web browser. The problem with on-demand CRM systems is that they may be difficult to integrate with existing software. Salesforce is the best known on-demand CRM vendor. Third, mobile CRM systems involve interacting directly with customers anywhere at any time. On-premise CRM systems are purchased as-is and then installed on-site. Open-source CRM systems provide source code available to developers and users. The problem with open-source CRM systems is quality. In It's About Business, Mobile CRM, and Disney World, Disney implemented a mobile CRM system. Magic bands are plastic bracelets that contain RFID radios. They form the central part of the My Magic experience, providing a way for the system to connect data to guests. Customers wear their magic band on their wrists. This colorful wristband is an all-in-one device that connects customers to vacation choices. Magic band enables customers to travel lighter throughout the vacation, enter parks, unlock hotel rooms, and buy food and merchandise. Magic Band also gives you FastPass access to experiences customers choose online. Basically, FastPass allows customers to cut in line for certain rides that they prioritize. Magic Bands allow the company to distribute special personalized surprises throughout the Walt Disney World Resort. Disney produces a digital keepsake allowing customers to see all their memories the company captured via images during the visit. The major issue with Disney's My Magic is privacy. U-Ship is the focus of another case. It's about business. U-Ship benefits from Sugar CRM. 
UShip Incorporated is an Austin, Texas based internet company that operates UShip.com, an online marketplace for shipping services. Individuals and businesses post items they need shipped in a variety of categories, including auto transport, boat shipping, moving services, and the transport of heavy industrial equipment. For UShip, B2B operations were more complex than B2C operations because of the longer term management. UShip used a phased approach to system implementation. Another case is It's About Business Morton's Steakhouse surprises a customer. Morton's Steakhouse responded to a Twitter post to please its customer. The restaurant case is an example of how to use CRM systems to enhance your business's images. This case shows the power of social CRM. Section 11.5 is about supply chains. Supply chain management is the management of the flow of goods and services and includes all processes that transform raw materials into final products. It involves the active streamlining of a business's supply side activities to maximize customer value and gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace. There are different parts of the supply chain. First, upstream. This is the part of the supply chain system process or relationship between a company and its raw materials and packing suppliers. Upstream is where sourcing or procurement from external suppliers occurs. Sensors, RFID tags, meters, GPS and other devices are used to collect supply chain information. These are all examples of source data automation. An example of an upstream transaction is when you order a pair of shoes online but they don't fit and you send them back. The second major component of a supply chain is referred to as the internal supply chain. It refers to the chain of activities within a company that concludes by providing a product to the customer. The second major component of a supply chain is referred to as the internal supply chain. It refers to the chain of activities within a company that concludes with providing a product to the customer. This process involves multiple functions within the company such as sales, production, and distribution. The third major component of the supply chain is known as the downstream activities. Downstream supply chain management refers to coordinating the flow of information and goods with clients and customers. Customers are in the downstream component of the supply chain. We also have a hierarchy of suppliers known as tiers of suppliers. This is the number of tiers involved in a product and it depends largely on its complexity. For example, tier one suppliers supply the main company, for example, an original equipment manufacturer. Tier two suppliers supply tier one suppliers. Tier three suppliers supply tier two suppliers and so on throughout the supply chain. There are different types of flows in the supply chain. For example, there are material flows which are the physical products, raw materials, and suppliers that flow along the chain. Informational flows in the supply chain are bi-directional. Faster and better information flow enhances supply chain effectiveness and information technology. Greatly transformed the performance. Finally, we talk about financial flows. These are cash flows within the supply chain, often involving banks. A relevant indicator of the health of financial flows is how efficiently capital moves between buyers and suppliers. Slow moving capital, much like slow moving inventory, creates unnecessary costs and inefficiencies in the supply chain. Section 11.6 summarizes supply chain management, which according to your book involves five phases. These phases are planning, sourcing, making, delivering, and returning. For example, in the plan component of SCM, the organization should come up with a strategy for managing all the resources that go toward meeting customer demand for the product or service. In the deliver component of SCM, the organization should manage the logistics process. These activities are often done between organizations, and we call systems that support supply chain management interorganizational information systems, or IOS. This is a system between organizations or shared information systems among a group of companies. The most common form of inter-organizational system is electronic data interchange, which permits instantaneous computer-to-computer -computer transmission of or information. We'll talk about EDI later. Your book talks about the difference between the push model versus the pull model. In the push model, projected demand determines what enters the process. For example, warm jackets get pushed to clothing retailers as summer ends and the fall and winter season start. Under a push system, companies have predictability in their supply chains since they know what will come when. 
long before it actually arrives. This also allows them to plan production to meet their needs and gives them time to prepare a place to store the stock they received. Ford uses a push model. And then we have the pull model. A pull strategy is related to the just-in-time school of inventory management that minimizes stock on hand, focusing on last-second deliveries. Under these strategies, products enter the supply chain when customer demand justifies it. One example of an industry that operates under this strategy is a direct computer seller that waits until it receives an order to actually build a custom computer for the consumer. The pull model generates customized products. Another case is it's about business Crate and Barrel improves its supply chain visibility. Crate and Barrel is a chain of 122 retail stores in the U.S., Canada, and eight other countries based in Northbrook, Illinois, specializing in housewares, furniture, indoor and out, and home accessories. Supply Chain Visibility, or SCV, is the ability of parts, components, or products to transit to be tracked from the manufacturer to their final destination. The goal of SCV is to improve and strengthen the supply chain by making data readily available to all stakeholders, including the customer. SCV enhances supply chain flexibility. Purchasing ability is an e-commerce opportunity for crate and barrel. Your book also describes problems along the supply chain. Primarily, the bullwhip effect is a distribution channel phenomenon in which forecasts yield supply chain inefficiencies. It refers to increasing swings in the inventory in response to shifts in customer demand as one moves further up the supply chain. As you can see from the diagram, the bullwhip effect means that there is more volatility downstream and that volatility is caused upstream in the supply chain. This section also talks about two basic solutions to pro supply chain problems. First is using inventories to solve supply chain problems. Undoubtedly, the most common solution to supply chain problems is building inventories as insurance against supply chain uncertainties. Whereas building inventories can be more expensive to store and warehouse, in these situations it is viewed as being advantageous. Another strategy is information sharing, which is one of the key aspects of coordination amongst parties in the supply chain. Supply chain efficiency is highly important as today's competition is no longer between companies, but between supply chains. Information sharing can increase supply chain efficiency by reducing inventories and smoothing production. Section 11.7 is about IT support for the supply chain management process. There are two basic technologies that your book talks about. First is electronic data interchange. I mentioned this earlier. EDI is the concept of businesses electronically communicating information that was traditionally communicated on paper, such as purchase orders and invoices. Technical standards for EDI exist to facilitate parties transacting such instruments without having to make special arrangements. EDI is a communication standard that enables business partners to exchange routing documents electronically. Initial investment is a limitation of EDI. The Berlin Airlift is the earliest known application of EDI. You can think of EDI as a computer-to-computer -computer email that makes transactions without human involvement. The second major technology that supports supply chain management is an extranet. An extranet is a controlled private network that allows access to partners, vendors, and suppliers or an authorized set of customers normally to a subset of the information accessible from an organization's intranet. Extranets support the linking of business partners. Extranets use VPNs or virtual private networks to make communication over the internet more secure. VPN allows you to work from home. You can relate to extranets because Banner and Canvas are both extranets. Extranets can support distribution portals that automate the business processes involved in selling or distributing products from a single supplier to multiple buyers. Another case is it's about business, India's new automotive supply chain extranet. India's automotive supply chain issues were resolved with the implementation of an extranet. India's OEMs, or original equipment manufacturers, paid for the supply chain extranet. The main benefit of India's new automotive supply chain extranet is efficiency. In the chapter closing case, Super Retail Group addressed the issues resulting from its growth in sales volume and brand strength by implementing an SCM system. 
Super Retail Group used a pilot approach to system implementation. This concludes Chapter 11. Thank you.